so I figured I'd show you a little bit on how I have my my machine micro um, hooked up to live. I made a little uh, template with the control editor that lets me uh, change the samples on my path with the, the screen here. So if I wanted to change my kick sample, I just kind of go to that kick page, that knob page that has the kick sample selector on it, and I can change that sound. Um, I'm also working on adding reverb um, from the screen and volume up and down is usually useful. So the way I switch sounds is I press the right arrow here, it goes over to the next knob page. And the knob page is basically, you know, what knob is this and what CC values are, are these sending to Ableton. So hi-hat obviously changes the hi-hat, etc. cetera. Um, the other cool thing I set up is feedback between Ableton and the LEDs on the pads here. So if I record in uh, a little sample, you can see that Ableton's actually lighting up with what's going on. To make Ableton send uh, MIDI info to the pads on machine to get them to light up, you have to do two things. Um, you have to go into your controller editor and click on the pad and you go to uh, the assign page and in the assign page by default the LED on says for MIDI out and you need to switch that for MIDI in uh, now what you're gonna do you're gonna do that for every pad by the way and then you're gonna go into Ableton and uh, you're gonna make a MIDI channel so you know just create a blank MIDI channel here I already have one um, and you can see that uh, the MIDI from is coming from my drum rack so all the MIDI information that's being sent to my drum rack is going to be passed along uh, to the MIDI 2 which is set to machine micro output um, if you have the full machine it might say virtual output or something like that or the mark 2 I believe um, the MIDI channel I just left on one and that way um, when I'm playing the pads and when I'm sending it back uh, the LEDs light up uh, accordingly. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty sweet if you're working with Ableton and Machine. I mean this would apply to uh, the full machine as well. Instead of scrolling between the different pages here on the little screen on the micro, you have the huge screens on the top to uh, you know adjust your samples and stuff like that. Uh, previously I had this sort of thing set up with my APC so that I would kind of move the knobs on here and they would correspond with the uh, with the pads and um, I mean I was using the was using the MPD as well before this so I've just kind of been trying to integrate machine a little bit more because I'm starting to like the pads they're really sensitive and nice and you know I complained in the other video that you can't do this you know you can kind of adjust to that but I can still go back to the MPD because I still have that that's kind of cool. Um, I might as well show you video sampling a little bit as well. Uh, so let's work on that next. I'm just gonna move the camera here. Okay, so uh, the video sampling is pretty simple actually. You can download the MP4 file from the YouTube video that you're watching pretty easily. Just get Firefox and get the plugin for that. Um, and it's actually really simple once you get a hold of the MP4. Um, Ableton likes MP4, um, other video formats tend to work, but MP4 seems to be the safest. So I'm just going to browse to that. Um, let's just take this Bill Cosby video, because it's hilarious, and drag it in here. So in this view, you will see the video on the screen. If you have the video editor open, you're going to see what's going on in the video. Um, so. Let's take off that stupid drum loop. So that's gone. Um, let's play the arrangement. So you can hear it. Come on. You gonna entertain? So if we actually make edits of this video, a few edit points. Let's just make four edit points at random places. So I have four different clips here. I'm gonna select all of these and drag them to I just press tab there to switch over. I'm going to drag them to session view 
and 17 track 17 is the same track that the video is on so that's going to work out so now I have these clips up here um, I've turned off launch quantization all right let's turn that off so we can play around with this more uh, so let's go to an empty part in our arrangement so this doesn't interfere with what's going on um, and if we start to click these you're gonna entertain you can see that your name your name your name your name your name your name. The audio from the video is triggered, but we can't see the video. Um, but that's kind of irrelevant right now. If we <clears throat> render it after, we're going to be able to see the video. Let's just assume the video is going to be there right now. So what I did in the other video is I took uh, the MIDI mapping of the clip launcher here, and I assigned it to different pads on my, my pad controller. And now... You're going to... Your name. Now it's doing Terrible. that, and I am able to hit record, and let's just do... I should do some random pattern there. You see it was recorded here as a bunch of different clips. Um, arrangement view will... T if you're launching different clips, uh, the obviously it's transferred to arrangement view and so if we play this arrangement here you see that the video is being chopped alongside what I did live with the uh, with the pads and it's as simple as that uh, yeah so that was something cool I thought of to do uh, this is my current template by the way if you wanted to see this I have drums loaded up I'm really liking Yuhi Diva. It's a pretty sweet plugin. Um, and I use that for a lot of synth sounds on top of you know my my actual synths. And a little road sound.